even why the front screen's not displaying. It's probably not going to work. We'll see what we can do though. Alright, 6R80, Gen 1, second design. everything as far as bushings go except for this front one so I have to wait for my bushing kit to show up. No telling when that'll be. Belleville plate goes with the dish up. This outer piston has to line up a certain way, so hopefully you marked it before you took it apart. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a lot of putting together and taking apart. I mark mine where these tabs are, and I just line them back up. short end of the taper of the snap ring goes up. Gonna need a pair of snap ring pliers. Normally I'd be putting the sun gear and the planet on right now. But since I gotta do this bushing, I'm gonna leave all that out right now. All right, most of these kits, you're gonna get green and, <coughs> green and brown clutches. Sometimes they're all green, but they're, the bottom line is they're thick and thin. There's 85 thousandths and there's 65 thousandths. Uh, the 85 thousandths are the green ones usually, and the brown ones are 65. So on this drum, we're gonna be doing brown ones. I gotta get the clutches out. Alright, make sure we're right. Yep. Alright, our pressure our cushion plate is 36 thousandths. Our steel is 116. 65 on our clutches. Or somewhere there's about. plate is 116, the snap ring 147, and normally we would be assembling this all, but we're going to have to set this to the side. Got the bushing kits already been installed and everything except for that one.
Alright, the uh, two O-rings for this piston and this piston are really close to each other. So we got to make sure that we get the right one on the right one. Just pick the best fit for both. That looks pretty good. And this side's going to go down. The bevo plate's going to go with the, the dish down. And the fingers, there's uh, spots in there where you're going to see where they were riding. Just stick them right back where they were. Short end of the taper up again. And put the opening of the snap ring right there. Alright, there's no cushion plate on this one. Our steels are 117. I like you can screw these up. There's only one set of clutches this, this size. Plates 118. Snap ring is 85. Different tooth counts, different sizes, different splines. So make sure if you change any of that, you match it all up. This one here is the bigger shaft and it takes three ceiling rings and their scarf cut to go together just like that. Set that to the side. When you're putting the bushing in this one, or actually when you're taking it out, there's a sleeve right down in here, right below that bushing. You need to find where the bushing is split at and split it right there, and it'll kind of push off inside of it. If you don't find where the split is, it's going to go down there and it's going to hit that sleeve and it's going to mess it up. The best way is to find a puller and pull it out, but I've gotten to where I can just uh, drive it out without screwing it up. These are the same way that the two O-rings for the this one and the Belleville place can go with the dish up. You can 
can see where the fingers used to be riding. That's where you gonna put them. You'll feel it when you put it on there when the fingers line up. Uh, short end of the taper up again. All right, we got green clutches this time, so it'll be the eighty five thousandths. Our cushion plate. 35, our steels are our 154. Our snap ring is 130. Ceiling rings are scarf cut again. center support. This side is the lower reverse side. Make sure that filter is in there. Probably going to have an extra o ring when you do it. Don't worry about it. This little tab has got to go on this slot right there. Dish up. A little tab in the retainer is going to sit up. I'm going to put the opening of the snap ring somewhere away from here. Uh, short end of the taper up again. Alright, this is the intermediate side. Bevel plate dish goes up. This dish goes down. Short end of the taper is going to face up again. Alright, 
green set of clutches again. Our pressure, our cushion plate is 42. Our steels are 117. Pressure plate, 151, and our snap ring, 132. If your pump does not have a bearing, it has the bushing, and you want to replace the bushing, you're going to have to order the bushing separate. It will not come in a bushing kit. Not a bad idea to always check your lines on your seals. Make sure they're going the same way. If they're going opposite directions, it will leak. All right, some 3M weather strip adhesive. Press my seal in. O ring on the outside. A line up pin. Pump gears go the dot up. And put our pump piece on. This piece on. There are 30 torques that hold this whole thing together. The short ones go in the very center and on the outside. The long ones go on the middle. Go press my shaft in.
gonna work from our center out. on the outside there's two different o-rings so you're gonna have one left over two ceiling rings here they hook together like so There's a spacer that goes between the drum and the pump. This one here, you can put it here or you can put it on the top of that sun gear and that drum. This one here happens to be a hundred and one thousandths. I always usually just put it right here. Uh, some of these shafts have one bushing here. And no bushing up here like this one. Some have a bushing up here also. All right, we are at a standstill until that bushing shows up. We'll be back when that happens. All right, got our bushing in. Go ahead and get the rest of this together. Got a bearing that goes on the back side of this sun gear. Goes inside of here. This is that snap ring that you're pushing off of these tips right here to get the planetary off and make sure we're going in there right we got this bearing with the lip down our drum goes on top this bearing with the lip down Our hub. This bearing, this side up. And up this hub. So just a tad on the tight side. All right, we got these little tips on the shell here. You have to fit in those cutouts right there. The snap ring has two cutouts in it. The short one is going to go right here. And 
then just knock this in there. Alright, we got our drum ready to go. Now, on our center support, there's these two lugs. One's going to go on each side, put it pretty much in the center. Alright, let me change camera angles and then we'll be stuffing this in the case. Alright, the bearing stays on the back of the um, output shaft. I'm going to set this down in there. Get this camera has kind of wrapped my way. This bearing lip down. Planetary is going to go in. We got this race, goes in the bottom. And with this bearing, lift up. Sun gear with the bevel up. Bearing with the lip down. Sun gear with the just stepped up. This bearing with the lip down. And there's a shim that goes there. This one's measuring 67 and a half. Last set of clutches, these are the brown ones, 65 thousandths. First plate's 219. Our steels are 70 thousandths and our cushion plate's 44. Cushion plate on top, the cutout area is going to go at 6 o'clock. Our sprag assembly is going to go in next. This area right here is going to go at the 6 o'clock. Our spring is going to go up inside of there.
screwed up shit, alright. Yeah, let's see. Spring's gonna go this lip down. This is gonna pop in right there. center support's going to go with the feed holes at 6, six o'clock. It's going to have to go in fairly straight. Snap ring is going to go with the bevel up and the opening at the 3 o'clock. Make sure we're all the way up in that groove. Bearings can go with the lip down. This drum's gonna go in next. This bearing's gonna go with the lip down. And drum assembly is gonna go in next. There we go. Get some lube on the situation here. Make sure our shim's on there. This is gonna be facing at the six o'clock when we're done. These, this here has to spline into that sun gear and the, and the drum there, so we're gonna be turning it. I don't know if you noticed, but this one doesn't have a bushing in the front. Yeah, it is normal. Can't remember what all we talked about, what we didn't. I'm tired of this part situation. Having to wait for stuff for days and then get back to a unit. Come on, drop. There we go. Now. lined up here. This is too tight for me.
Make sure I didn't drop a sealing ring. Camera's right in the way. I don't know what's going on here. They're never this tight going in. Let me figure out what I got going on here and I'll be back. Okay, the uh, bushing, small bushing on that drum was way too tight. In fact, it was pushing it out. I had to change it out. Under each one of these pump bolts, there's a rubber washer. Make sure you change those out. Uh, something we should have done after we put the center support in was check our end play right here i mean our clutch clearance right here and our, or actually on the lower reverse down here and get a better view of all this down here and it's okay so we're good to go there. We got our check valve that goes here with the spring underneath. We got our seal that goes right here. Rubber on both sides. Make sure you put those in there. The deep side faces down. There's rubber seals that go down here. This one doesn't take one. I usually just go ahead and stick it in there anyway. Give them some lube. The long one goes down here. The next, the longest one here, and the two short ones here. Like I said, this one doesn't have to have it. And from this point here, I'm going to have to use this video for the other one because the valve body still hadn't showed up and they got tired of waiting on it and they wanted to install the unit and put the valve body on later. So I wasn't able to put the valve body on. We got our, our valve body is going to sit on here. Our manual valve has got to line up on that tab right there. We have the long bolts go everywhere in the middle. There's three short ones that go down here in the bottom. Tighten these up last.
we have the pass-through connector, has two O-rings, has this flat orange looking O-ring. Uh, some of them are black. It's got a line-up tab, just push, put it in there, turn it till you fill it line up, and shove it all the way in, and that tab will go down. Now, depending on what pan you have, is to what filter you're going to have. This one's a more shallow pan. The measurement from from here to down here is two inches, six seventy four. It takes a filter. It's got an inch eighty three from here to the top of the deal. The other one, the pan measures, and this is that was on the four by four over there on this one, three inches. 300 one thousandths from here to the bottom and this neck from here to here is one inch 788 alright I'm just going to put a couple bolts to hold the pan We'll go on and finish the unit, and uh, I can come back and tighten this up. You don't need to see me tighten this up. This is where it's going to stop for the other video, because I've already done all this other. But on this one, we'll go ahead and uh, do the rest of this. Of course, there's two different rear seals. This is the two-wheel drive one. And so here's the two-wheel drive, that's four-wheel drive. Here's a seal down in here. It goes this way, the lip faces in. You can put it in by hand. Just lube it up. and it'll push in by hand. And then that's an inch and five sixteenths. I put red Loctite on here. I have to go get my socket. It's not in here. And you just tighten it down, stake it in those two spots right there. So I'll do that after. Put this on here so that it doesn't fall off. We got a plug here. Six millimeter Allen. There's another one up by the linkage. It, or actually towards the front of the bell housing. It's a five millimeter. It, you do it the same way, so I'm only gonna show you the one. There's a flat O-ring in here. Let's get you a scribe and dig it out. The uh, filler tube has one also. So I'm not going to show you that one. You do it the same way. It's right there. 
It's a 19 millimeter on the dipstick and it just screws in the side. I leave it loose because they're going to take it back out to fill it up anyway. Um, I guess the only other thing we got to talk about is uh, cooler lines. On your cooler lines, this is going to pop on first, and then the rubber seal, and there's two of them, and it just pops into the side of the case. <clears throat> right up here, and uh, there's a bolt that holds that in. Oh, the lever seal. I almost forgot because I already done the other one. I just get a pocket screwdriver. I get between the linkage and the seal and I just pop it out. Like so. I don't pull that all out. If you take that off on the inside, that little detent roller is going to fall off. You need to make sure you put it back or it will not work properly. And it's very easy to lose it. linkage seal goes in with the spring side in. Just lube it up real good. You're going to have to take your pocket screwdriver and work it up over the linkage. And then once you do, you just get a socket and knock it in there. Come on now. You can almost push it in by hand. It doesn't matter the size of the socket. This one just happens to be uh, 7 16 quarter drive. it and uh, we are done with this unit see you on the next one now I find that this uh, clip on this one usually is the one that breaks and this one was broke and uh, Transgo gives us new ones you can get them also from Sonax this one's going in that way These are your factory dampeners. This rubber tip comes out. The uh, rebuild kit's gonna give you some. Just pops in there. Transgo also gives you some. I don't use these, I use the ones from Sonax. They give you these new dampeners and they give you these springs. Just put a little grease in there and hold it in place. Depending on your plate is how many of these you're gonna use. Uh, not all plates have all the holes usually uh, not usually usually they're all in there but you get the later ones and they only put these two in got these check valves with the springs on them they go with the check valve up one goes there one goes there we got the large filter that goes here we got the small filter that goes down here and we have eight check balls one goes here one goes here Six. 
seven and eight. This one in the wrong spot. And it goes up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, depending on your plate, how many holes are in right down here, how many accumulators you're going to use. Always match your plate up. This is the, the number that you need to match up your plate. Just because you gave them that number does not mean they're going to send you the right plate. Make sure your check valves are poking up through there. The Sonic kit also gives you uh, that cap that goes on that PR valve. This part of the valve body on top. The short bolts go everywhere in the center. Uh, the long bolts hold the conductor. Actually, it is a conductor plate on this one. The other one is a Tecum. But this one is actually a conductor plate. So we'll just get these started and put our conductor plate on. Flip this over. The first generation oil passages look like that. Our conductor plate, ISS, OSS, temp sensor, neutral switch, no computer on here. We have our lineup pin going to go there and there. We've got to line up this onto our manual valve. Missing the manual valve. There we go. Alright, be careful when you're flipping this over. The six long ones, one goes there, 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 there. Short ones go everywhere else.
start and center and work our way out. our valve body for that one. Catch you on the next one.